Hi there, I'm Angela. Welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, I'm so happy that you're here. Today we're talking sewing plans for May. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. It's a new month and that means new things to sew. And as usual, I always plan for two makes each month just because I'm usually pretty confident that I can go quickly enough to get two things completed. And then sometimes I'll add in a third, like a stretch goal. So I will show you what those three things are for May. Let's go over to the sewing table. I've kind of got all three of my patterns and my fabrics laid out here so you can get like the big picture. So I'll kind of go in order of the way I intend to make these things. So first up is Vogue V8996, and I am still unsure whether I want to do the shorter version, View A, or the long View B. And if you can see way back there at the other side of the table, that's the fabric I'm going to use. It's a chalet that I got from fabric.com like a couple of years ago, so I'm finally getting around to sewing through all of my uh, pandemic purchases. <laughs> So I bought enough to make the long version. This pattern is a fabric hog. So while I have enough to make this one, um, the long version, I'm wondering, questioning, like, will I ever wear this kind of a long dress anywhere? Whereas the shorter dress, I know that I probably will wear that pretty frequently. So I'm still undecided and I'm gonna have to figure that out soon. So this uh, dress does have pockets. I'll show you the line drawings there very simple it does have a zip up the back and get close in so it's a line dress close fitting through the bust lower princess seam side front pockets back zipper narrow hem so just a quick glance at the yardages right here you can kind of see that it's like pretty much a fabric hug and I'm going to be grading between 20 to 22. So of course that means a little bit more fabric. And you can see for view B, my fashion fabric is 60 inches. So that helps. But still, we're looking at five yards of fabric. So still undecided. We'll see. Here's a better look at that chalet. Very soft, of course, as you might expect from a rayon chalet. And the colors are pretty vibrant. I tend to wear like softer, more muted colors, especially after I had a color analysis done last fall. But that doesn't stop me if I really, really like something. I'm still going to wear it, you know, even if it's not quote unquote like my best colors. And if you guys are interested in hearing more about the color analysis that I had done, let me know and I can do like a whole video about it. It was a birthday gift from my husband last fall and it was uh, kind of eye-opening. Some of it was pretty much like what I expected, but there were some surprises and it was overall a pretty fun process. So yeah, I'll be happy to do a video on that. Just let me know if you might like that. Next up is... This is another uh, Vogue pattern and it's V1630 and the pattern does have both the top and the pants but what I'm going to do is the shorter length capri pants. I'll show you the line drawings on that. So they're just pull on pants probably an elastic waist. Yeah elasticized waistband, pockets, and the fabric that I'm using is I've shown this on the channel before, but it's been a little while. So it's a stretch sateen with these little French bulldogs all over it. It's so cute. And it has some words like uh, dreaming, just love. I think it says summer on it. It's so cute. You could wear any number of colored tops with it. Got some citrus fruits. It's just adorable. This would be such a fun, fun pair of capri pants to wear in the summer. I got that fabric from Mood, I think, moodfabrics.com. And next up is a McCall's. It's M7386. 
This pattern has both a skirt and a couple of different lengths of dresses. I've made this pattern before. I made a skirt from this pattern and I loved it. I actually made it to wear on vacation to the beach last year and I totally loved it. Easy to make and easy to wear. Those are my criteria anymore. It comes with a little tank top and two dresses different lengths and three skirts different lengths. And I am planning to do the shorter dress. The fabric that I'm using is this, uh, it's kind of like a soft blue and it's a rib knit that I got from Joann's I think last year. So it's pretty thick and it's pretty comfortable. While I'm talking about color analysis to give you more of an idea, this blue here is a little bit darker and dustier than it's showing up in the video, as opposed to this very, very bright, like turquoise type of blue. So by and large, like quote unquote, my blues would fall more into like the dustier, softer range. So this piece would be perfect. Whereas that one technically might be a little too bright for me, but I love it and I'm gonna wear it anyway. So, all of those patterns are going to be pretty simple to make up, especially um, that last one, the blue rib knit dress. Easy to make, easy to wear. <laughs> that seems to be like my sewing theme lately, just because, especially right now, um, a lot of my time is spent in the garden. This is April and May are pretty much the busiest months in a gardener's life. And I'm just spending hours a day out in the garden. So any kind of sewing that I have to squeeze in here and there, really um, can't be too complicated or I'll just uh, it just gets to be overwhelming a little bit too much. So I keep it kind of simple when I have all this stuff going on. Plus, um, I am in need of some capri pants. All I wear these days are pretty much cargo pants or yoga pants. So I need some pants that are a little bit dressier that I could wear out with some cute tops. And then that blue rib knit dress will be like pretty much a wear anywhere, anytime kind of dress in the summertime. Throw on some flats or some sandals and some maybe like a chunky necklace and good to go. That's what I'll be sewing in May. What are you guys working on this month? Let me know in the comments. I was really sorry to miss uh, Friday Sews last week. I love um, when you guys can jump in the live chat. It's really fun to interact. It's really what makes this channel fun to do. And it was just, um, gosh, I was so tired. It was a pretty busy week last week. And by the time Friday came around, I feel like I was just toast. It's like, I got to take the weekend off. And I pretty much did that. I did get a lot of gardening in because you can't neglect that. If you miss your window on some things in the gardening area, then you waited too late and you might be out of luck, especially when it comes to timing of getting certain seeds in the ground or getting your transplants in and things like that. So I did get some gardening in, but other than that, I just pretty much took it really easy over the weekend. I hope you guys had a great weekend and hope you're having a great week. Let me know what you're working on in the comments and I will be back this coming Friday for Friday Sews. Also, I wanted to, before I sign off, I did put out a little poll uh, on the, the community page on YouTube. Uh, to see if there was a better time on Friday evening to do the live chats for Friday Sews. And it was kind of um, across the board. So I gave three options, 5 p.m. And these are all Eastern time because that's my time zone. 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and 7 p.m. I personally like 7 p.m. because it gives me a chance to wind down if I've worked that day or worked in the garden. And I think it gives a lot of people a chance to get home from work, get settled in, and then maybe sign on. But knowing that we're in all different time zones and also trying to accommodate anyone uh, in Europe or other overseas countries, it makes it a little challenging to find the right time. So I'm still seeing some um, people answer the poll. And based on what those results end up being, we'll either keep it at 7 p.m. most most Fridays or maybe bump it up to 5 or 6 p.m. and see how that works out. Anyway, that's enough of that. I will talk to you guys Friday. Bye.